Hi, my name is Son Olsen, and in the previous video we started looking at mesh attachments in Spine. In this video, I will cover the remaining topics. Clicking the new button will delete all current vertices and enter new vertices mode. This mode allows you to define the hull of the mesh by clicking to create vertices. The vertices can be translated by dragging or deleted by double clicking. When the mesh hull is complete, you can exit new mode by clicking the first vertex you created to close the shape or by clicking the new button again. New mode is a quick way to define the mesh. Alternatively, you can use the create tool to create vertices and edges and then the delete tool to remove any unwanted ones. When a vertex is translated in edit mode, it changes the position on the image that is used for the vertex when drawn and not the actual position of the vertex. When exiting edit mode, you'll find the vertex position has not changed, but the image is now stretched across the mesh. In edit mode, checking deformed will show you how the mesh looks outside of edit mode. When deformed is checked and a vertex is translated, it changes both the vertex position and the position of the image that is used for the vertex when drawn. A mesh's vertices and edges are used to decompose the mesh into a number of triangles shown as faint grey lines in edit mode. Triangles will never cross an edge, so creating the edges manually gives complete control over how the vertices are connected by triangles. This is important since the triangles determine how a mesh is deformed. For example, here in Spineboy's head, where we have created the hull and now want to stretch the nose by dragging a vertex. When the vertex was moved, only the triangles that include the vertex are deformed. This stretches the tip of the nose, but not the base. By introducing a new vertex, we'll get different triangles and the mesh will deform differently. A new vertex is added at the base of the nose, now the vertex we are moving belongs to two triangles. This stretches the entire nose, but also a lot of the cheek. Another vertex is needed to stop the cheek from deforming. A new vertex is added under the nose, and the entire nose is now contained within two triangles. But moving the vertex deforms only one of them. To fix this, we need to create an edge by selecting the create tool and dragging between vertices. The new edge, which is displayed in orange since we created it manually, causes the nose triangles to connect differently and the nose can be deformed without affecting the rest of the head. There are a number of factors to consider when choosing where to place mesh vertices. The hull of the mesh should exclude as much blank space as possible since any pixels outside the hull are not drawn and won't count against the fill rate. This can improve performance for a game that is fill rate limited, especially for large images with a lot of blank space. For example, a tree image may have a lot of blank space on either side of the trunk. Generally, you want to keep the amount of vertices in a mesh to a minimum because the position of each vertex must be computed by the CPU each frame. This is a fast operation, but many skeletons with many meshes on the screen at once can add up to thousands of positions that need to be computed. The placements of vertices and how they are connected by triangles determine how the mesh deforms. It is important to have enough vertices for a smooth bend, for example on a long tail. A common deformation effect is to make the mesh appear 3D. You can achieve this by using an edge along the center of the mesh, following any contours in the image. The edge vertices are then animated towards the mesh hull, stretching one half of the mesh while squashing the other half creating the illusion that the mesh is rotating in 3D. The mesh vertices can be rotated, translated, and scaled just like any other attachments outside of edit mode by using the transform tools. You can translate individual vertices with any transform tool by dragging, which will deform the image. Multiple vertices can be selected by holding control and clicking or by dragging to box select. The selected vertices can be deselected by pressing spacebar escape or by clicking in an empty space. 
The origin used for rotational scaling can be changed by hovering the mouse over the small cursor in the center of the rotate or scale tool until a circle appears. Then drag the origin to the desired position. The origin will automatically snap to vertices. When a mesh's vertices have been manipulated in animate mode, the mesh can then be keyed. Animating the vertices is known as freeform deformation or FFD. You can rotate a mesh's vertices with the rotate tool, but when the mesh keys are actually tweened, the vertices will translate in a straight line from their position in the first key to the position in the next key. Multiple keys can be used to make the vertices appear to move in an arc instead. Since all vertices are keyed together, it can make it difficult to animate different parts of the same mesh solely by using FFD, unless all the FFD animation is done using the straight ahead approach. For complex animation, it's better to use weights. When using the texture packer, whitespace stripping cannot be applied to images that are used for meshes, since a mesh may have texture coordinates in the whitespace. If the whitespace was removed, the mesh would use pixels outside of the mesh's texture atlas region. Each image for mesh should only contain the white space the mesh requires, and white space stripping should be disabled in the texture packer settings. It's common to want to reuse a mesh with a different image. For example, you might have animated a mesh for a flag using FFD, and now you want to use various different flag images with the same mesh and animations. Duplicating the mesh isn't a great solution because it results in two separate meshes, meaning any changes to the mesh needs to be made multiple times. Also, the original mesh's FFD keys are not applied to the duplicate mesh. We could copy and paste the FFD keys, but then any changes to the animation needs to be applied to each duplicate mesh. Linked meshes solve this problem. To create a linked mesh, click the blue linked mesh button at the bottom of the tree. This is similar to duplicating a mesh, except the new mesh uses the same mesh structure as the original, because linked meshes share the same mesh structure as the original mesh. Any changes to the original mesh or any linked meshes will affect all the meshes. A vertex will appear with a ring around it to indicate that changing the vertex will affect other meshes. To use a different image for the linked mesh, simply rename it or set the path property. If inherit FFD is checked, then any FFD keys for the original mesh will also affect the linked mesh. If inherit FFD is not checked, FFD keys for the linked mesh can be set as normal. A linked mesh must always be on the same slot as the original mesh. Moving any of them to another slot will cause all the meshes to be removed, but linked meshes can be in different skins. So this covers attachments and meshes, and I hope you found this video helpful and we'll join again for the next video. Bye for now.